fat, animals eat less. It was these four words combined with my own on-farm data and observations that led me to apply for a UK Nuffield Farming Scholarship. I'm Vic Valentine and I farm with my husband Jason in Sutherland in the beautiful North Highlands of Scotland where our location and geography present a number of challenges, not least of which is managing our extreme pasture growth curve. In summer we can grow more grass than you can poke a stick at, but winter is long, wet, cold, dark and expensive. So when I heard those four words, I wondered, can we make the most of this so we can better manage for this? What impact could selecting the maternal animals with naturally better body condition have on our livestock systems? As farmers, we actively manage for BCS throughout the year, targeting recommended scores at different times in an animal cycle. In fact, none of this is new. For decades, we've known that body condition, the fat and muscle we feel and observe across the lower back of a ewe or cow is directly linked to improved reproduction, health and productivity. So why hasn't it been higher up our selection criteria? If it is so important, surely having animals that meet those targets more easily makes sense. I set out on my travels, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, Iceland and across the UK. I spoke with geneticists, researchers, academics and most importantly, farmers. And there's some really interesting information and data around BCS, and I'm only going to touch on a fraction of the things I discussed and learned. The geneticists I spoke with agreed that BCS is around 25% heritable, making it worthwhile selecting for, given we know it will have a positive impact on productivity. And much to my disappointment, there isn't a single genetic marker to identify good BCS. Maternal traits are complex. The phenotypical observations will always play a significant part. And it's important to point out that I'm talking about genetic rather than environmental BCS. We can always feed an animal to target, but the real wins come when our animals are able to hit those targets more easily because they have a genetic propensity to do so. Traditionally, we would have called them easy fleshing, but at some point, did we lose sight of easy and replace it with a feed bag? Instead of propping up lean animals with priority feeding, we need to find those animals that can put on condition during the spring and summer when grass is cheap and plentiful and then hold that condition through the winter. The farmers and breeders I visited had all been working to improve the genetic BCS in their herds and flocks. This meant ensuring pedigree stock were produced under commercial conditions suitable for their commercial clients. They found it had improved health and fertility and allowed them to increase stocking rates and productivity. They had more robust and resilient livestock able to respond to challenges from parasites and climatic extremes. And what is hard to put a number on is the impact these farmability traits can have on farmer wellbeing. Knowing animals are fit and well, even on difficult days, is a benefit we shouldn't underestimate. Now, unfortunately, many of the rams and bulls available in the UK have never experienced any nutritional or environmental pressure. Yet we expect them to breed females suited to commercial conditions. Blame for this imbalance cannot be laid entirely at the feet of the breeders. As commercial farmers, we make the decision to trot off to the sale ring every year, coming back with overfed and overdone males. We need to be more discerning about how our maternal males are reared, as their genetics will be in our flocks and herds for years to come. Unfortunately, there has been some great work done in the UK and several sheep and beef breeds now include an EBV for BCS. Back in Scotland, we have found that through our selection and culling policy, our own cows and ewes have an increased BCS. This has improved scanning and survival, reduced wormers, vaccinations and other inputs and allowed us to increase stocking rates. It's enabled us to run a profitable small farm whilst maintaining a work-life balance. So my message to other livestock farmers is this. Take the free lunch. This is such a simple and easy win. UK livestock farming is crippled by high input costs, but low input systems require robust and resilient animals. And good BCS is the starting point for that. Selecting for animals with a genetically higher body condition score is easy to do, doesn't require costly resources, and can improve your livestock business.